negative one. What? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to now video. So this weird <laughs> equality right here it looks pretty fucking weird. Is the introduction to a little theorem that we are going to prove after doing a few um, prerequisite videos. So um, yeah, bear with me here. We are going to prove a little theorem later. We haven't introduced Stirling's formula up until this point, so we have to do it the hard way. <laughs> and the hard way starts by kind of showing that this equality right here in these holes we are going to dive right in. I'm going to take a more heuristic approach to this thing because we are going to end up with a double product and just like dealing with double sums it's kind of hard to do in an abstract way to prove this. You have to imagine this like an n times k table you could say. Yeah we are going to do it differently. So at first we are going to start from this side and see where this gets us. I want you guys to consider the recursive definition of the gamma function right here. So you see, it would be cool to cancel out the gamma offset down here. How can we get a gamma offset up here? Well, if you remember correctly, we can express gamma offset, which is nothing but z minus one factorial as nothing but, well, z minus one times gamma offset minus one. Okay, so what we do, we reduce the argument by one plug it in here and multiply it by the gamma function of this reduced argument. Meaning, if we would just reduce this gamma function right here, n times k times, then we would get gamma of z times some product. Meaning, for this first part, we are going to get, okay, I'm going to write out the first iteration. So this is going to leave us with gamma of z minus uh, plus n times k minus one times z plus n times k minus one. Okay, over gamma of z. This has been the first iteration. And like I said, we are going to use this recursive definition on this gamma function up here in the numerator, n times k times. Meaning, this is going to give us in the long run, gamma of z over gamma of z, which is pretty cool. This is going to vary a to one. So we got rid of this analytical function right here, times. Okay, so we have z plus n times k, minus one. Then we have z plus n times k minus two, dot, 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 up until z plus n times k minus n times k, which is nothing but z. Meaning we can rewrite this left-hand side of our equation as nothing but a finite product of, let's say, um, j being equal to one, two, n times k, of z plus n times k minus j. Okay, this is what we have right here on the left hand side. And now we are going to deal with the right hand side and see where this actually gets us. We are going to use the same arguments we did right here on this fraction, meaning what we want to do, we want to get a gamma of z plus s minus one over k up here in the numerator. Okay, meaning we have to use our recursive definition of the gamma function exactly n times on this original gamma function to get where we want to be. Okay, meaning we are going to get for the right hand side, k to the n times k power product from s being equal to one to k of, okay, in the long run, we are going to get gamma of z plus s minus one over k and then over gamma of z plus s minus one over k but what do we have up here exactly? Well, what we have is z plus s minus one over k plus n minus one. And then the same thing nearly with a negative two, dot, 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 up until negative n. n and n is going to cancel out to nothing z plus s minus one over k. Meaning overall, this thing right here, okay, this thing right here is going to cancel out to one, and we are going to get k to the nk. We have a product from s being equal to one to k of, okay, now we have a new product, the product of all of those. 
up until which point do we go? Well, from one to n. Okay, so we are going to say um, i being equal to one to n right here of, okay, we are basically going to get z plus s minus one over k plus n minus i. This is what we have right here. Okay, maybe it's a bit much input, but just take a piece of paper to write out for yourself. We can actually bring this k to the nk power completely to the inside. But how can we do this for this? I would like to take a look at a simple example. So um, if we take a look at a product from i being equal to one to three, for example, okay? And we are going to say, this is nothing but two plus i. What's this product going to weigh a two? Well, this is nothing but two plus one times two plus two times two plus three. Okay, meaning overall, in here we have this factor of two all the time. So we can factor out the two actually. So this is two to the third power times, okay, we have one plus one half, and then we have one plus one over one. I'm going to put it like this, times one plus um, three over two, or this is two over two, it, it really doesn't quite matter. Meaning what we did, we have actually brought this two to the something to the outside. So it's nothing but two to the third power or two to the n up here, it really depends, times some product up until n. Okay, this is the basic idea what we are going to do. Meaning we can bring this k to the n cave power in here, basically, leaving us at this point with, okay, we are multiplying k to the nth power with itself k times. This is what this product right here says. So in here, if we put it in here, we are going to get k to the nth power. Now we are going to take this k to the nth power and put it in here, meaning we are multiplying k with itself together n times. So this is going to leave us with a k. Okay, I hope you, <laughs> k, okay. I hope you can see where this all comes from. Meaning we are going to have this double product of k times this chunk. We can distribute the k into here, leaving us with exactly one product to k, the other product to n. Then we are going to have z plus n minus one, we got rid of this, plus k times n minus k times i. I want to rearrange this stuff a little bit because you see, um, we are basically, so if we know that this equality holds, we also know that this thing right here, this single product up until n times k is equal to this chunk. And it's kind of of the same form. So if we take a look at this thing right here, if we rearrange this a bit, right here we had z plus n times k minus some factor. Okay, so this thing is nothing but z plus, okay, n times k we have here. Then we are going to have, okay, all the other chunk, negative, so negative, okay, we have a one right here, so negative one, if we drag out negative, that's okay, plus k times i and the negative s. Meaning, this double product is going to be actually equal to the single product where our j that we are going to have, this running index, is nothing but this factor right here. And like I said, I want to do this really heuristically, meaning we are just going to take a look at a certain example and then you can hopefully trust me that this equality really holds. I really can tell you how you can do this more abstractly and more rigorously. All I can really say is that you can take an n times k table because you are multiplying over the k terms and then over the n terms or at, at first over the n terms and the k terms, you can also switch the order. It's a billion and yeah, just like you are doing this in school with the multiplication tables, it's the same spiel. But yeah, um, we are going to do this heuristically in a second. <laughs> so we are going to take a look at examples which aren't really hardcore. And I would like to make n and k differently. So let's say n is two and k is three. Okay, meaning our product is six leaving us with up until six. Like I said, n is two, k is three. Let's put it like this, meaning n times k is nothing but six. And here, yeah, same spiel here, six, and k is nothing but three. <sighs> Let's put it like this. Okay, um, we are going to start right here. So meaning our product, if we plug in j being equal to one, this is z plus six minus one is nothing but z plus five. 
Then on the next one, Z plus four, I hope you can see where this comes from. That's supposed to be a four right here. On the next one, okay, six minus three is just three, Z plus three, then Z plus two, then J being equal to five. So this is going to give us Z plus one, and then J being equal to six is nothing but Z. Okay, Coolio, this has been the easiest part. It's pretty easy to compute this single um, product. Now we are going to go for this meaning. At first we are going to take a look at the inner product and then the outer product. For the inner product, we are going to get, I'm going to put this here. So we are going to have Z plus six minus. Okay, we are going to go over I. So this is going to give us three and then plus one is four. So negative four plus S. On the next one, we are going to have z plus six. This is going to stay how it is. And then negative, okay, we are going to have a two right here. This is our highest index. So six plus one is seven, so negative seven, negative s. And yeah, this is already the first part. And now we are going to go for the last part. So letting s run from one to three and see where this gets us. Meaning we are going to have we are going to apply the, the one to all of those terms and then the two to all of those and then the three to all of those, multiplying all together. So this is Z plus, okay, six minus four in this case is nothing but two. Okay, so we are going to get two plus one is three. Next up, this thing right here is going to give us negative one. Negative one. What? I'm terribly sorry. I. I forgot that there should be a positive sign right here. Never mind that. So negative one plus s um, is going to give us, s being equal to one is just one. Okay, so this is going to give us the z term. Okay, next up, I'm very sorry, this confused the fuck out of me right here. Now we are going to plug in two. So this is going to give us um, z plus four. And then negative one plus two is just positive one. So z plus one. And the last one. So we are going to get z plus, okay, three into here, z plus five. And then negative one plus three is two. Oh, oh, I was already thinking, what the fuck, Jens? What are you doing? But you see, so we have um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, just like up here. So those two products are actually equal. Or oh, there was weird. <laughs> That's something that never really happened to me before. Um, I don't know, that was a weird situation, never mind. So you see, um, heuristically speaking, you are just going to make yourself an n times k table with all of those entries that you are going to get right here. And then you can just get those entries just like you did in school. Um, yeah, I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend the channel if you like. Uh, like I said, it's more of a heuristic approach. I'm more of the... Um, of the let's prove it guy more the abstract guy in a normal case or at least i'm trying to do this rigorously most of the time but yeah sometimes you can't help it and it's just like with this cauchy product where you go over the diagonals and then you result in something it's also something that you arrive at heuristically so yeah um if you did enjoy this video please like subscribe recommend channel if you like if you want to support channel a bit more by those teachers created blah 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 <laughs> and up until the next video have a flammable day see ya Ich sage herzlich willkommen bei Shop. Die Leben in wunderbarer Nähe in Stuttgart. Ihr seid.